Hey yo, what's good guys? Welcome back to the channel. We're gonna do a deck profile update today for the post Phantom Nightmare format and for this video we're going to talk about the Chimera branded deck. So uh, I'm gonna show you the profile, try to talk through some of my choices. This is the build that I would play for post Phantom Nightmare, trying to make the non-engine work for what's actually going on and kind of talk through some ideas that kind of change up uh, for this particular format and what I'm playing, trying to incorporate uh, one of the new cards from Phantom Nightmare actually as well. So uh, for this format, I don't think this deck is like the absolute best choice uh, or like even close to it, but I do want to try some things. I want to take this opportunity to test the deck out, test out some choices that I haven't played in previous formats, okay? So uh, there are going to be a couple experimental cards that I'm just like, I have to try these. I have to give it a go, see how the deck has played with them, and see how they perform. And uh, yeah, hopefully it turns out well, and hopefully you guys enjoy this deck profile. So uh, with that being said, let's go ahead and hop on in. Okay, so let's get into the main and extra. I have a 41 card main here just because I wanted to fit all the non-engine that I wanted. So you can obviously cut a card, but we're gonna talk through the card choices a bit and see where we're at, okay? So starting off is gonna be fairly standard in terms of the uh, Chimera Fusion package. We're playing three Sword Knight, because it's your best starter. Three Quaddle, because it searches Sword Knight. Three Gazelle, because it's engine and it's really, like, it, it's really nice to keep having Gazelles and Burfamets to search. Uh, on that note, we're playing two Burfamet as well. I do like the three and two, but honestly, if there was a ratio I might change is adding a third Burfamet. Like, I really think that you turbo through your Burfamet so fast, and it's nice to just keep having Fiends as material to con more consistently go into your Chimera King, uh, and to be able to actually make more than one per game, because... Uh, oftentimes, the first Burfamet you're going to use to make your Chimera King, the second one you're going to use probably to go into Guardian Chimera, and then you're out of them. So, like, you, yeah, you can bring one back with Chimera King uh, to make a, more Chimera Kings, but typically, like, I find myself wanting a third Burfamet, and I wouldn't really frown upon anyone trying to play three. Uh... On the similar note, two Chimera Fusion, I really do think two is enough of this card. Like I've said in previous deck profiles, like hands that are that lose would not be fixed with a another Chimera Fusion, typically, right? So this card is just so searchable and so you know recurrable that I think two is gonna be just fine. I think three is a little excessive. Like if you open two of them at once, like it's not gonna further your end board any really. So I do think two is gonna be okay, and it's just a way to kind of minimize on the brick hands. Uh, okay, now we're on to newer illusion cards. So I'm trying Master Tao the Chanter. Uh, I do see some value in this card and seeing some uh, plays where you can like kind of extend a bit more and at least be able to just load your field with materials and i do think that i at least want to try it i want to try one master tau and then we're playing the new card out of uh phantom nightmare emissary from the house of wax so essentially this card uh when your opponent tries to uh beat over you in battle phase you can drop this card so that they cannot destroy anything by battle and then they cannot use any of their monsters on the field as materials so maybe they try to put up a, a board of really big monsters get through whatever they can and then make some kind of cool extra deck stuff going on later well emissary kind of just stops them from making any of the extra deck stuff later they have to probably sit on a board of stuff with not a lot of interruptions and that's really where this deck shines is the like a little bit more of a grind game where you can kind of just break through a minor board instead of breaking through a huge interruption board and i think emissary is just an extra nice piece of interruption that you can search off of gazelle when we fuse away the gazelle in turn one we can search the emissary off of the gazelle search so uh it does bring a little bit more value to that a lot of times i found myself in the past just searching crap like a second quaddle or a second mirror sword knight where it didn't really help me any and it was just at most guardian chimera um, like fodder, uh, material fodder, but with Emissary, we actually do have another interruption that we can search. So I kind of like that addition to the deck. 
Uh, okay, moving on. This is this wraps up like our illusion stuff. Now on to the branded stuff. So we're on three copies of branded fusion and two copies of fallen of Albaz. This is the standard ratios. I do like the two Albaz because I do often want to resolve two branded fusions in the same duel, and we not we're not always shuffling back those Albazes. So um, it's kind of nice. And then we're on in this particular format. We're on three opening two Alibur. Let me tell you why. And this is instead of prosperity. Number one, it's a droll format, okay? A lot of decks are main decking or at least side decking droll. Prosperity loses to droll in this particular deck because even if you dig for a starter, you're not gonna be able to do anything with it. So uh, the branded opening doesn't have that problem. Like we can activate it in the draw phase, which is really nice in droll formats because we can at least search a branded fusion and then we can branded fusion for Rinbrum or whatever we need. And then at least if we get ashed, or I mean, if we get drolled after the Rinbrum search, at least we have an interruption on board. We have a little bit of follow-up, uh, you know, Rinbrum, Albaz and Graveyard is kind of nice. Um, so we do have at least some kind of play and it's good. The other reason is branded opening secret effect which is destruction protection for your fusion monsters and this is a format full of destruction effects especially with the um the fire decks rescue ace the trap that destroys your stuff you can protect with branded opening uh kieran effect to pop one of your fusions for free we can protect with branded opening and then kind of float with aliber as well because aliber does have his own secret effect so it just helps with the grind in this format and uh, in formats with a lot of destruction, opening gets a bit more value, and I do like it in this particular one. So that's basically it for the branded stuff. Now we have a lot of slots for non-engine. I'll start with three copies of Fenrir, as is in most decks these days. Uh, I do love Fenrir in this deck, I've always said, because not only is it an interruption that doesn't care about Droll or Ash or any hand traps, but also when we do resolve the Fenrir search, it's just an extra body in our hand that we can use for Guardian Chimera materials. So um, it just serves double duty there. And I really think Fenrir is fantastic in this deck. Uh, and then the last non-hand trap is gonna be one called by the grave because of the amount of hand traps in this format plus called by is actually fantastic even going second into the fire decks like called buying the promethean princess or into lab called buying like the like a, a lovely labyrinth in the graveyard so they can't use that anymore or summon it out with big welcome from the grave and stuff like that so yeah i think call by is really good in this format uh and then we have our last things which are hand traps and other um going second card so uh three copies of ash uh in this particular deck is going to be fine three copies of super poly i actually think super poly is really great this format uh especially with the fire stuff and all the labyrinth um it, it's going to work out really well like we can hit the fire stuff away for garura typically or mud dragon both both actually come up depending on which fire deck you're playing against and then uh garura into the labyrinth matchup and also uh, like a, a nice feature is that you can super poly like one of your gazelles on field plus a labyrinth monster into a chimera king of phantom beast so that's pretty clutch uh when it does come up so i do like super poly in this format i think it's much better than it has been in previous formats uh three copies of imperm just because it's good and lastly three copies of nibiru okay so not only is nibiru good into the fire decks typically and to like Kashtira and stuff like that but also it's a light monster so we can send it with branded fusion to summon the albion from our extra deck to go into a mirror jade if we so choose uh as well as a material for titanoclad to beat over the ex pearly noir so there's just a lot of uses for nib and if it's ever like dead in a matchup it's at the very least guardian chimera material fodder so yeah this rounds out my main deck this is 41 cards um i don't know i'm pretty happy with uh how this looks and I think this is pretty good. I would like to fit triple tactics talents in here, but um, yeah, I was thinking about two Nib, two talents and playing 42 cards, but that's up to you. I do think Nib is just strong enough and this deck is a little bit too weak to go second these days. So we want to max out on the hand traps instead of on uh, like mixing hand traps and breakers like talents. I'd rather just go all out with the Nib. All right, on to the extra deck, uh, starting off with the normal like in-engine Chimera stuff. 
Uh, we have two copies of Chimera King of Phantom Beasts. Pretty standard. Honestly, if there's a card to cut in this extra deck, it's one of these. Because I don't see myself going to two very often. But it is like the best like engine card in your extra deck. So I can see the value of playing two. Uh, one copy of Burfmet. It's not that great. And I'm not playing any of the gimmicky like Barrier Statue or End of Anubis or King Tiger Wangu. That kind of stuff. I'm just sticking with... Um, kind of like standard non-bricks and but this does come up every now and then if you we want, need to get a mirror sword knight engrave or stuff like that uh and then we're on one big chimera uh chimera the illusion beast always clutch for just random otks uh i do actually like one magnum the reliever particularly in builds with branded opening and brand like more access to branded fusion than usual just because we do frequently have the um fusion spells engraved to be able to use with magnum and not only that but also uh there's a lot of matchups where rinbrum is not that good okay so if we make rinbrum and then uh, we might be able to uh go into magnum instead of that rinbrum and then get the rinbrum engraved for albaz effect later and i do think magnum has value there uh two copies of guardian chimera uh, i think is always necessary in this deck so we're still playing that. Uh, and then on to the Albaz stuff. One Rinbrum for the searching and combo. One Titanoclad as an out to uh, Expertly Noir. Uh, and then two Mirror Jades. And then I'm testing two Albion instead of Lubelion. I'm playing zero Lubelion, but I actually like Albion because it's the best send off of Mirror Jade. And also, like, sometimes we want to go. The first Albion into Mirror Jade, and then the second uh, Albion into the Chimera, the Illusion Beast. Like Albion's probably the best uh, branded like bridge, and we're I'm not playing like Dragoon or anything, so I don't think Lubelion is that good. So um, I'm gonna try two Albions and see how it goes. And then the last two slots are the Super Poly slots, uh, Mud Dragon and Garura. There are a lot of options, honestly, for extra deck spots. Um, you could play SP Little Knight for sure. Uh, you could play Predator Plant Dragostapelia. I'm not playing Dragostapelia because that is not a very relevant super poly target these days. Like, darks are not really in the format, and opponents' fusion monsters are not really in the format either. So, I don't think it's that great um, right now. And then we could also be playing, let's see, different like super poly stuff like Starving Venom Fusion Dragon or uh, Draco We Kissed if you're running into Manadium all the time. I have that super poly targets video out on my channel that you can check out to pick the most optimal uh, targets for you. But yeah, this wraps up my uh, Chimera branded deck list for the Photon uh, Phantom Nightmare format. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you're enjoying, and I'll catch you in the next one. We'll see you.